Good evening, everybody in Facebook land. Hi, this is Nino Miani, founder of Map Training, personal transformation educational program. People who like to excel. Um, we got going to get started tonight here in a couple of minutes, uh, and we got a great program that we're going to discuss with you tonight. Give you some more ideas on helping you make your bucket list, uh, be able to dump it out and fulfill your dreams. And tonight we're going to look at shadow dancing and it's the concept of looking at that dark side of ourselves, dark side of the world. We have the collective shadow, we have our personal shadow. Both of those uh, either make you or break you and based on the relationship that you have with each one. Now most people are usually, uh, for lack of a better word, ignorant of either one and they are causing problems and challenges all the time in people's lives, whether it's in relationships or business or um, health, the, the list is huge. So uh, let's see here. And the way it works is, is through deception. It, it, it uh, tricks you into believing what is not true. Uh, there is a quote by Mark Twain. He says, uh, I don't believe in everything what people say because what, what most things they say is not so. And so if you are falling into the illusions that people tell you, most of the time they're not telling you the truth. And so they're missing the full impact of how your life can be enhanced and uh, can grow. I noticed we have uh, Mariah just joined. How you doing tonight, Mariah? And uh, we got Osha Ray. Good to see you, Osha. I, I wished you a happy birthday the other day. So you're what now, 28? <laughs> it's good to see you. you. Look great. Thank you so much for dropping in and sharing a few minutes with us tonight. So we're talking about shadow dancing, you know, and it's how to make you how it really causes your challenges in life become become more difficult and what they make your your life's more difficult because uh, we're both believing the illusions that are thrown at us uh, the illusions are thrown at us in a lot of different ways and we're under this constant invasion and there's five characteristics of map training and if we understand each one of them what we do is we we are able to make a fist and grasp life most people are usually doing this, you know, pointing the fingers. So you got three fingers, fingers pointing right back at you. And so what happens, it means that you are three times more responsible than what things are happening in your life than this one right here. But when you take this one last finger here and you close it up like that, you now are taking and grasping the shadow because it's inside your fist. You're taking control of your life in a very really powerful way. Now that's, that's the scary thing for a lot of people because it does take some confidence to go like this instead of, oh, it's your fault. You're, you've made this thing wrong for me. Uh, the government uh, did this, and now I'm a victim of that. Uh, my boss did this, and I'm a victim of that. Uh, you know, and so we're under invasion from a lot of different things. Just look at some things that we're really, we, we probably all recognize what we're under invasion of. One, sugar. Sugar is in everything. Sugar has is the biggest poison that you can put in your body. But we, you know, I'm I'm guilty of getting my donuts every once a week. But I know I I, I suffer for that <laughs> very very quickly after I do. But sugar is in everything, so you can really watch that. That's so physiologically we're being bombarded with pollutants in in our food. Sugar is uh, used in everything that you can imagine. Our air, our water is all polluted. It's filled with fluoride, filled with all kinds of different things. Uh, when we turn on the news, we're being polluted by the news. And we don't know if they're telling us the truth or if it's just some line for them to sell more soap by their, the people who advertise for them. Uh, we're being uh, at work. We are being told to follow a certain way of thinking. And, and it may not be supportive of what we feel would be the best environment for us to be able to work under. Uh, we're struggling financially because we believe that we have a limited potential and the truth of the matter is we really have unlimited potential if you really can understand how that all works so tonight we're going to look at about all of those things there we're going to look at 
how the shadow can carry you where you need to go and no longer be fearful of the events that happen in your life because we have an understanding of it. Now, before I can do that, let me like to share a little story with you. It's a story in the, it's called The Wizard of Ursi by Ursula Le Guin. And it's all, and the, and the story is about this young man who wanted to become a wizard apprentice. And he got an opportunity to do that and study with this very, very famous wizard named Ojian. Now they're, they're uh, going through, and when he's learning about this whole work, he's learning about uh, uh, how to become a wizard. By the way, if everybody can hear me really well, could you type in there that you can hear me? Some people said last week where I was not very loud. So if you can just give me a quick type and let me know that you can hear me okay, that would be really good. Just a little indication. That would be great. And I'll look for um, little comments on make sure that I am being audible for everybody to hear. Okay? All right. Back to that story. Well, when he's confronting this dragon, and he's telling this dragon that he can't leave this island, and the island is uh, some place that the dragon has taken over. And, and the dragon says, you can have my little baubles around, which it has gems and things all laying on the ground. And he says, no, I don't want that. I want you to stay on this island, and I don't want you going go and pestering anybody. I don't want you leaving the island and going and eating the people from the other island. And he says, well, who are you to tell me what to do? He says, because I know your name, Yavad. And the dragon goes silent. Just about every mythology, just about every story that you read in the world, when you learn the shadow's name, you now have power and influence over it. When you know what it is, uh, we've all heard the story and then read the story about Rumpelstiltskin. He says, if you can tell me my name, I'll give you back the child. Well, Rumpelstiltskin is your name. And so they end up, he got so frustrated, he just burst into a, a cloud and disappeared. That's how it works when you understand and know its name. And most of the time, it's a tough one to be able to get. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, like you have um, um, the difference between punishment and discipline. Let's talk about that for just a second. Punishment is where you are actually creating an environment to get someone to change by using a methodology that we would call, um, let's see, motivation. Now, motivation comes from the Latin word motivo, which means to shake up. So you, your child throws a temper tantrum. Many times parents will grab them and shake them. Yeah, or they give them a swat on the rear end, or they give them a smack across the face, or they yell and scream at them, or a teacher gives you detention, or you get arrested and they throw you in jail. And that list goes on too. Well, those are examples of punishment. Punishment is designed to isolate you, to take you away from the collective, the, 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 the environment that you live under. And as a result of that, it prevents you from really excelling because it's, it's separating you from uh, the people, the environment, and the resources that can be able to help you. Now, everybody here, just let's, let's take a little experiment. Take your hands and put them together, like put them out like that, about, oh, say a foot apart. Hold them there for just a second and tell them when you can feel a little tingling in your palms. When you feel a little tingling in your palms, Bring a little closer together so you can feel it. And as you begin to feel this, that little tingling is called chi. That's your life force energy. And when you have a relationship with that life force energy, the chi, it's so immense, so amazing. And you can connect with the resources that are in the universe and line it all up. It empowers you. See, where punishment using motivation doesn't take that chi that you have, that power that you have, the genius you have. It isolates it. It takes you out of the flow so you can't feel that pull of the universe. And the pull of the universe happens both 
positive and negatively. For example, uh, the law of attraction, if you are unconscious of your thoughts and your whole world is, is, is based on punishment, then what will happen is that you will be isolating yourself. The law of attraction will means that you are going to attract a lot of demise that comes to you. That's how the law of attraction works. It works 100% of the time. It's not nothing that I um, have to convince you about. Just look at your world. Take an assessment. That's uh, number two of characteristic and map training. Taking a personal assessment of your life and seeing how is it going. Is, am I being dictated by the winds that are blowing and the tides? Or do I have a rudder that's, that's guiding me? Do I have a sextant and a map where I can be able to be guided in the direction that I want to go? Or is it all happening by just by chance? If it is, then the law of attraction is working at its lowest vibration. And so as a result of that, you never get beyond the, the consciousness of motivation. That's why motivation doesn't work. It doesn't work in school. So we're trying to motivate our students to be able to excel in, in school and, and um, in class. I was uh, playing racquetball yet last night, and I was in a jacuzzi there, and there was a young man sitting next to me. And this gentleman across the way said, uh, he start, they were talking about being nice to people. And I says, do you know what the old English meaning of the word nice means? And they go, no, what is it? I says, well, the word nice is a polysemous word, which means it has two meanings that are, that are polarizing. One's over here, one's over here. The old English, the one over here, means idiot or fool, someone who's nice. The modern version, as we are here uh, learning about nice, it means congenial, someone who is basically a doormat for the world. That's what nice means. So in nice, in, in this word nice, is what I call a rune. And words are like runes. Runes uh, have meaning to them. They are prophetic. They're little, you know, like if you look at the Celtic runes, for example, the, the little rocks that have a little symbol on them. And each symbol has a specific meaning. But then you don't understand the meaning, they become prophetic. They start to lay out a idea that's coming your way. Or it's something that is happening that once you understand it. So words work that way, too. So you have to work, be careful what kind of word you use. Like certain words, the shadow loves you to use. Let, let's take a word that the shadow loves you to use is the word try. Take the word try and throw it out of your vocabulary. Don't use it for a day. Watch what happens. Don't use it for a week. Watch what happens. How about another one? Should. Should is another word that the shadow likes you to do. But so... Take the word should out. Say, I will not should on myself today. <laughs> Don't use the word should. Don't use the word try. Don't use the word can't. Any word that is debilitating towards you is going to take away your empowerment. And that's what I don't want to see happen. But by you learning how to articulate yourself and know the shadow's name, so I know that we, I've given you three examples of the shadow's name. And no, I'm not on the phone tonight. I'm, I'm going to be just here on the, the video tonight. So I told everybody that normally comes on this phone to just come on the video. That way they can see it live. Okay. Um, so uh, if you are able to say those words... You, you're calling out the shadow say, I'm not going to, I know your name, can't. And can't says, I, I can, but never tried. But I'm not going to try, I'm going to do. I'm going to go get the experience. So try is your name, shadow. I know that. And now I know your name. I know what you want to do. I know what the prophetic meaning of try means. I'm not going to use that anymore. I know your name. So when you do that, it disempowers it. It takes the power out of it. It's like taking a balloon, blowing it up, and then letting it go. It lets all the air out. It has no power anymore. It gets its power only through the illusions that you buy as truth. Now, another word is discipline. Now, there's a really cool book I just finished reading here. I'm going to share it with you guys. It's, it's called uh, Jordan Peterson's book, The 12 Rules of, for Life. Very interesting book. Um, I make it a habit of reading a book a week. I don't have a television. I, I unplugged it. I don't have cable. 
Uh, I refuse to support an environment that does nothing but dummy down my world. So I'm not going to do that. I cancel it all. Uh, most people, interestingly about reading, after you graduate from high school, over 80% of the people never pick up or read a book again. 80%. Uh, we also find that uh, like 87% never go into a bookstore after high school. Pretty shocking. So one of the best places to hide information from the general public would be the public library, and that's free. <laughs> Everybody there can be able to... Uh, um, Oh, you know, let's see, hang on just a second here. I think there's some people that want to get on the phone call, so I'm going to do a quick, quick little call here. Take me just a moment. Uh, hang on, everybody. I wasn't going to use this tonight, but there's a bunch of people on the call that got on there, so I'm going to get it so they can come on, too. All right. Good evening, everybody. Hi, it's Nino Miani here. I'm sorry I forgot to make the call to get everybody on. I'm on uh, Facebook Live right now. So how many people we got on the line? Three. Three, right. Three. great. And uh, could you tell me your names? Wendy. Wendy, okay, great. Great, and great, great, great. Thank you very much for, for calling in, you guys. Um, I... We are moving into this consciousness of shadow dancing tonight. We're uh, looking at uh, ways of being able to leverage the shadow and help us carry us where we need to go in our life. Now, there's a lot of places where we like to go, like to, like to achieve success. There's financial success. There's, there's physical body success of getting, you know, losing the weight and getting fit. There's social success of being able to interact with, with the world and what's our connections with that. We have our relationship successes you know, that we want to have with our, with our partner, with our children, or our business associates. It, it's big and it's, it's immense. And one of the best ways is learning how to get, create what's called a discipline. And the word discipline is very inter interesting because what a discipline does, it realigns you with the flow of the universe and keeps you moving with the flow of the universe. So you're not just using the will all by itself. See, most people use only the will to get through life. And that's getting up and pushing through every day. And usually about midlife, we're running out of gas. Well, using the map training technology here that we that we use uh, to educate my students and help them to excel. And I've got hundreds of people all over the country now are learning this. And now we've also have uh, graduates now that are, are now know how to teach this as well uh, across the country. I'm very excited about it. We just had our first uh, graduating class of teachers just uh, last month. And it's to teaching them to be able to learn how to become disciplined, self-disciplined, which is generated by what we call inspiration. Now, inspiration comes from the Latin word inspirare, which means to be filled with spirit. And when you're filled with spirit, we get excited about what we're what we want to do we become passionate about these things and we want to do whatever we can to make it happen but a lot of times when you run you get this energy you're moving up against this energy out there which is called the shadow the shadow one of the big ones is self-doubt how many people here at one time or another have drawn on a wall when they were a child most people usually have, and you ask yourself, what was the type of response I got from my parents or my guardians when I drew on the wall? Most, most people usually got some sort of reprimand. They, they uh, oh, got sent to the room or they got spanked or um, got chewed out really well for drawing on the wall. 
And then you ask them as, as uh, say, as adults, how many people here are now artists or draw or paint just for fun? And you find that nine out of the 10 people who have had that experience are not experiencing art. Art is really important because it gives a place for your voice to be articulated in a very interesting and provocative manner that benefits not only you, but the community at large. See, the shadow is going to be seen. You're going to be seen no matter what, because your soul demands to be seen. And it's going to be seen by the two sides that one, through the shadow, which wants to isolate and make you think you're no good. And then thus and it starts to blame everything around you. So you act out against it. Or you find a way to be able to articulate yourself way through art, like what we're doing tonight. You know, I'm sharing some ideas here on the video and some aspects of it I may not have done so well, but I don't really care because it's more important about just doing it and getting the experience and getting you to have the experience as well. And doing that, we all win. That's the exciting thing. The shadow doesn't want you to win. It wants you to lose. It wants you to keep you isolated away. So how do you get it to carry you? You become disciplined. And one of the things that helps you become disciplined is having a mentor that can help you keep you on track. I took piano lessons for 22 years. I had a piano teacher, started when I was 22 years old. And she, we had our lesson had Thursday morning, seven o'clock in the morning. And she was an inspiration for me. I went from playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to playing the Chopin Polonaises. I can read music. I enjoy playing the piano, I play the guitar. I'm a professional musician and a magician. But, I, but I'm doing these things because I'm driven to do them. They're, they're fun things to do. The ways to express myself and be able to help other people learn how to do that too. And it's really exciting watching everybody that I've been talking to over the, over the past uh, 20 years, watching them grow. I ran into a good friend of mine 20 years ago I met him. Came to me. He says, can you help me? I said, we went through the program, the map training. And I had lunch with him about a week ago. And he said to me, that map training is, is such a unique experience. I never had anything like it in my life. It prepared me to be a parent. Because I remember you talking about the consciousness of discipline. And the consciousness of discipline uses what I call Mustafa's paw. You guys all remember that Mustafa from The Lion King, right? He was, it was Simba's father. He had, it was this powerful male image that had the ability to cuff the cup, the cub, when he kind of got out of line, but not enough to, to knock his uh, self-esteem out, but just enough to get his attention. And also he had, where he could feel that immense power of this deep masculine energy that Mustafa had. One of the challenges that we have, and by the way, here's a consistent um, anomaly that have, has happened to every single one of these shooters. Every one of them had no father. They were all omitted in their life. No father figure. Every single one of them. It's tragic. Without having that, that ability to have acquire that. I remember when I was a young man, I, I didn't have a father image either. I remember, but I was drawn to these guys that worked in this gas station. These, they were the salt of the earth from Louisiana. And I hung around there and they eventually hired me, I think out of default <laughs> to work for them. But they were amazing individuals, and they were, like I say, the salt of the earth, and I just kind of bumped, rubbed up against them for a while to kind of get this feeling. And then I went on a 35, 40-year spiritual journey to explore that. Like, what does it take to be a man? What does it take to be productive in this society? How can I be a great father to my children? How can I be a great contributor into the community and, and be able to bring this medicine back from this world that we call the mystery? And going into that mystery and going out or preventing my, many times preventing yourself from going into the mystery is this thing called the shadow. It wants to isolate. It wants to keep you to yourself. It wants to put up walls between you and it and your dream. But if you have a relationship with it, you can scale those walls. There's no wall that can hold you because your dream is so big and it's motivated by inspiration which requires you to learn a discipline, which I did. Uh, I went through traditional tribal initiation at 39 years old. I mean, that's unheard of. But I, I demanded it. I, I wanted it. My soul being wanted it. And, and if I didn't get it, after I did go through it, and it was a horrendous, horrendous experience. It went on. It took me a long time to recover. 
from one of the rituals. It took me about a year and a half. But you know, I do it again in a heartbeat. Because what I have learned and what I was able to share with my own children, which I'm now bringing out and sharing with everybody here, it's so exciting. Because the things that I desire to do in my life, I'm doing and having a blast. When I graduated from college in 1977 from UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara, I wrote down 68 goals. I accomplished all of them except for one. And I believe the next ones will be accomplished for the next 18 months. But one of my goals was kind of uh, superfluous. <laughs> it was to go to Paris for lunch. I want just to go there, have lunch, sit on the Champs-Élysées, drink my glass of wine, eat my cheese and bread, play my guitar, and talk to the people and watch the day go by. And I did that. How many people have dreamed of it, but they never done it? So, so what I'm saying to you is that the map training consciousness, and there's five elements of five characters. Let's go for them real quick. Number one, we have to recognize we're under invasion. Who is invading? In this five years of their life, they were being invaded under. Our personal psychology, our social psychology, our spirit and soul, our finance and our physical body. There's five areas that we're being invaded with. When in the second uh, characteristic map training is you take an assessment of your life. So I would take assessments. How am I doing? And then I started connecting up with what I call elders and teachers who are better than me to help, help guide me, give me the gentle nudges through discipline. Just the gentle nudges that gave me the inspiration to learn a little bit more and push me a little further. The third thing is you need to create a relationship with what we call the archetypal energies that surround you. So when I told you to hold your hands together like this, about a foot apart, and you started to feel that energy between your palms. That energy between your palms is energy that the invisible energy of the universe taps into, and you can tap into it too. The pituitary gland has a, is a vibrational gland, and it picks up um, energy from the universe, and it's also a transmitter too. And what was happening, because of the bombardment of us physiologically, many people has had their pituitary gland, it's calcifying. When it's calcified, it can't resonate. It, it's like a crystal. And crystals, when they vibrate at a certain frequency, they create this wavelength. And this wavelength goes out into the universe and picks up information and brings it back. And thus, we're able to send information out and bring the information back. So meditation is very, very powerful, and that helps you make that, that pituitary gland grow, grow so that you can be able to have vibrate at a higher frequency. When you're doing that, you're raising your level up, and you've now, as you raise yourself up, you awaken what we call the giant, which is the shadow. And as you awaken it with your mentor and your helper, it helps you identify how it shows up in your life. So when you start to take your personal assessments of your life right now, say financially, and you're not making the type of money that you like to, and you find yourself limited on what you can and cannot do, uh, I always believe that the thing to do is to create a lifestyle. What is a lifestyle? Lifestyle is dictated by you. When you want to get up, what you want to do, and have the money to do what you want to do. And have the people around you that love to be with you, too, to do what you want to do. I live in Santa Barbara. You know, it's a wonderful place to live. Uh, i got the beaches right here. I grew up surfing here. The mountains are right behind me. I go up hiking and fishing back there. I've been around the world many times. And it's because I cr chose to create a lifestyle versus a living. A living is more, more or less like having a job where you work hard enough to keep from fire, getting fired. And they pay you just enough to keep you there. Map training is about to break out of that. It's about breaking out of that, those, 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 those bonds. And when we do break out of it, we create, start to create and move towards lifestyle. That's when things really start to move for you and start to really become exciting. So if anybody has, as I'm going along here, if anybody has a question, please throw out a question. Um, write something down. Or if you're on the phone, if you've got a question, go ahead and let's take a moment and let's... Uh, Let's look at this. Anybody got any questions or anything uh, they'd like to want me to expand on for them? Okay. All right. In conclusion tonight, what can you do about all of this? How can you be able to master this technique? Number one, you can keep coming here every Tuesday night, and we would be more than happy to share some more ideas on map training, more about the, about the shadow, uh, how to name what it is, uh, 
all the aspects of it is creating a relationship with this energy, which is huge. It's so powerful. But once you know its name, you can call it out. Like the word try. Try is a name of a shadow. When you call it out, you now know its name. And you look at the, the being of the word, of the identify what those things are you give it a name it empowers you um, a technical difficulty with the, the video went down so um, how can you conquer this being number one keep coming every every Tuesday night number two go to my website type in some information that you'd like to have presented to you uh, Come to the on the, my website here. Just click on that, and it'll give you all the information about the uh, the website and the workshop that I'm doing in Boulder, which is going to be really exciting. We've got a nice group that is coming. Uh, it's, we're filling it up very rapidly, so please attend that. You'll, you'll it'll blow your mind. It'll inspire you to go out and do amazing things. Um, send me a post. You know, write write what you liked about what you learned tonight. Uh, what you some questions you might have had. Don't hesitate. You know, I find asking the question is more important than knowing the answer. And you never can ask a what I call a stupid question. And or. What a lot of people have done, have done over the years is that who heard me talk and got, after we talked a couple of times, you can become a student. I can mentor you in this in this technology, which you don't you're not going to find anywhere else here. Tony it's Robbins doesn't teach it. Uh, let's see, I don't see it anywhere else. It's a very unique concept. All the pro, all the other programs are excellent. This is another vehicle to help you achieve your dreams and make them come true. So it's been great tonight, and I apologize that we had a technical difficulty about uh, roughly five minutes ago, and everything went dead. So I hope everybody had a good time tonight. Uh, next Tuesday night, uh, I'm going to be talking about the seven secrets of turning your dreams into treasure. We're going to go through each one. It's a book that I have that will be coming out, uh, which will help you, along with the map training consciousness, to have a really powerful vehicle to move, move your dreams into treasure as well. Um, don't forget our Boulder workshop, which is a week from this weekend. Uh, it's Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. Uh, Thursday night in Boulder, we'll be doing a free lecture. So if you're in Boulder, um, look for the on the website here where the information is uh, on the uh, my, either my website or go to um, the Facebook page on map training <clears throat> that'll give you the information that will be listed there for next Thursday night and I will be here again uh, next Tuesday discussing the seven secrets so I hope that helped you guys and I hope you got some good information I look forward to um, talking with all of you I see some of you have actually um, have listened to some information so um, uh, here we go let's go to Facebook.com slash events slash 1488009361. So that's where you can learn more information about the workshop. So I'll be sure and, and check into it. And I'll see you guys next week. Have a good night. Bye-bye.